Now we are ready to start translation with creation of a new translation project. Uh, but before we actually create a project, we need to have a translation memory to be added to the project, right? So um, as to this dialog, I can I can close this document here. For this, you should either go to File, Close, or you can use Control F4 as the combination. Control F4, I press, the document goes off. And uh, now I can switch to, uh, yeah, now we need tr to create a translation memory. For this, you can go to File, New, New Translation Memory, or you can go to the uh, Translation Memories view and uh, press New here. So this is what I do. I create a new translation memory. Now, um, we should uh, assign some name to it. So since I translate from English to Russian, I'll make it English Russian. Uh, we should select a location for our translation memory. And by default, all the translation memories are stored in um, documents, uh, Studio 2015, uh, translation memories right here in this folder, which is empty at the moment. So uh, I'm uh, quite satisfied with the, with the location. I should recheck also the source and target languages. They have been, uh, they have been uh, determined by the application correctly. And here we see this option, enable character-based concordance search. The thing is that if I uh, select this option and perform a, a concordance search, uh, the program will be uh, looking for not, all, not for only exact matches for the a word that I uh, search for, but also for similarly mm, uh, spelled words, like if I look for the word resource, uh, the results will also include such word, as, such words as resources, sources, and, uh, and, and so on. Also, uh, selecting this option is not recommended for a big translation memory, but it is recommended for a small or medium-sized translation memory because it'll let you uh, find uh, abbreviated words and also misspelled words. Since we're dealing with quite a, well, absolutely empty, right? New translation memory, we should uh, select it and then we can, pro can proceed. I press next. Uh, nothing to change here, so I go next and uh, I press finish. Uh, we see that our memory has been created. We can close this dialog. And you can see that our transition memory is displayed here. We have uh, an empty, we have an empty uh, source area. We have an empty target area as well. And in this folder that I opened before, we see that our memory was just created. Now we can close it. So uh, a number of uh, basic uh, options for any memory are available, mm, either from this ribbon interface or from this pane, where you can go to your memory and right-click it to see what options are available to you. As I told you, the most basic uh, ones that you would mm, most often use are import and export. Also, if you want to delete a translation memory, um, you can uh, uh, actually, yeah, from this pane, you can simply remove it as uh, from, the, from the list, right? This doesn't mean that you're deleting it from your disk, so no problem with selecting this option if you want it. Plus, uh, if you want to add a translation memory to your project, you don't really have to have it open in the translation memories view. So if I want to add my translation memory and to update it with my translations, I can easily uh, remove it from the, from the list from here and switch right to the projects view to create our first translation project. Now, cr to create a project, we can either select the new project uh, button from here, or I can press Control N. This is what I do. I press Control N. A dialog appears. Uh, I go next. Um, as you can see, we also have a default location for all the projects. It's it's documents, Studio 2015 projects. This is where we will have it. Um, okay, so I. Uh, this is the name for the for the project. You can assign whatever name you want. 
uh, you can also uh, set a due date and select a customer from a list of customers that you're supposed to uh, generate if you want to, right? Uh, since I have uh, many customers and they differ, I prefer not to complicate the situation with creating customers and adding due dates because I do know what the data is due, right? So I go next. Uh, here I see if the source and target languages, languages were selected properly. No problem with this, I go next. Uh, here I need to add the files, the files to be translated. Uh, for the purpose of my course, I, I created a folder called training course, right? And here I have uh, sample files. I uh, also prepared some, some folders for you to show the possibilities, mm, the features of this application, but here I also have two files that I will use for the purpose of translation. So here I press add files and I go to my desktop to the training course folder and I have my sample files, files here so I'll select source and this will be the file to deal with to translate. Now um, if uh, the application doesn't find anything uh, wrong with the file that you are trying to translate it'll tell you that it is translatable but uh, if something is wrong uh, you will see that it's only a reference. If you want to avoid this problem, uh, if, you, well, if you're actually having this problem and, and it says reference, you can uh, delete this file from here, selecting this option. And you, I, I recommend resaving this file to a different format, like in case with Word, it would most likely be, you'd most likely have to resave it from Word 2007 to say Word 2003. Uh, this is usually quite a, quite a solution to this problem. Since I have no problem, I press next. Now, as you can see, uh, a, um, a memory was uh, automatically added to my project, it was recognized, but I will remove it from here just to show you how to add it. Uh, yeah, here we added translation memory to our project to, to use for translation, to save the translation to. Uh, I press add file-based translation memory, and we go to Documents, Studio 2015, Translation Memories, and here's our empty translation memory that we just created, that we created recently. Now you can see that uh, this memory is enabled, has been enabled. Uh, we, it is available for lookup. This means that uh, for those results that will be displayed in the translation results uh, window, you probably remember it, I'll show it to you again. We see that uh, this uh, memory is available for concordance search and for update. This means that uh, all my translations will be saved in this memory. Now, if I disable it, you can see that other options are also unavailable because uh, I have uh, switched it up, right? So I enable it. Now, this is the dialog where you can add extra translation memories for your project for this or that reason, for your own reason, right? So I do add file-based translation memory, and I return to my uh, training course folder, to my sample files, where I have some sample TMs, translation memories. I go to it and I select another TM. Now, you can see that it was enabled by the, by the application, enabled for lookup and enabled for concordance. And it was not, it is not available for uh, update. If I want to update it, I can easily put this option here as well. Uh, this is up to the user, right? Uh, since I do not want to, uh, at the moment, to display working in two translation memories, I will simply remove it from here, from this list, and leave just one. Uh, also, this is the dialog where we will add those dictionaries that I was telling you uh, about before. I mean, the auto-suggested dictionary and a glossary created in multi-term. We will skip this at the moment because we haven't yet studied those. So let's just proceed, pressing next. Uh, this is the dialog, right, where we can add a uh, glossary created in, created in uh, multi-term. This, as you can see, it says as the L multi-term 2015 desktop, right? So we don't have any yet created. We just skip it and go, we go next. Uh, in this window, uh, we can uh, specify files uh, that were similar files that were translated before for the application to be able to add some matches into our new file. But since we haven't one done, we skip it too and we press next. Now here's some of the batch tasks that I was telling you about before. We have uh, a number of them available here, as you can see. 
Uh, usually, I select prepare without project him. What does it mean? This means that uh, my file will be converted to translatable format. Okay. This means that a um, a an SDLX live file will be created in the source language folder. Let me just show you where it is. Uh, we go to yeah. I have a sample project folder here. So let's just let me just uh, show it to you. Uh, convert to translatable format means that in this source uh, language folder an, an SDLX lif file will be created, right? Um, also, um, another option here is copy to target languages. Uh, this means that uh, another SDLX file will be uh, created, which will be a bilingual well one, and it will be saved in this target language folder. Let me show it to you. Here it is, right? This is the file that will contain my translation, and this is the file where, where, where my translation will, will be saved to. So uh, the thing is, we need this uh, source language as the LX live for the guarantee that after we are done, we can easily save our target file and um, our target translation, right? And this, uh, the double language one, is also can also be used by us to populate a some other translation memory that we might have to create in the future. Or we might also be asked by our customer to return uh, the translation and the two language, uh, right? The bilingual file for them to be able to use for their own purposes. So this is what it is. Now, apply perfect match is not, are not available for us because uh, we don't, as I told you before, we don't have any uh, files translated before. I mean, similar files. Uh, as to the pre-translate, we cannot also do this because our transition memory is empty. And analyze files is this the statistics mm, that will be uh, calculated and displayed to us to know what the number of uh, probable uh, matches is. Okay, so, uh, and there's another option like this, which is prepare, simply prepare. If I select it, you can see that another, um, another mm, option was added here another task, which means populate project translation memories. This means that if you want to create a project with a separate translation translation memory to be used within the project, besides your own, right, another memory will be created and populated with matches. Uh, since I don't really prefer to create a an individual, a separate translation memory for every single document I translate, I usually do not select this option and I select prepare without project TM. But this is up to you. So this is this is only like um, yeah this is up to you and uh, depends also by by the uh, requirements that a customer might say like if they also need a translation memory then you uh, select this option and you'll be able to provide your customer with the translation like say says say, say um, this is a word document right you'll give a word document you will give a bilingual uh, SDLX lift and you will give a translation memory so this is up to you and this is up to a situation a particular situation now I go next and uh, I go next again and uh, finish now we have all five tasks done uh, successfully. Here I prefer not to store settings for future use because usually customers differ and documents differ and whatever uh, transition memories I use differ a lot, d differ also. So this is uh, the, where I do not store any settings and I go close. Now we have a sample project created. Uh, sorry, we have a project one created. Right, we have project one created. We go, uh, now we can simply Double click it and see that it contains our source file with 0% progress done yet, right? Uh, it says it's in translation, so uh, a translator can proceed straight to translating it. Uh, well, uh, let's, for, for an experiment, create a project, another project, and select that option that I was talking, telling you about. So we go new project, next, let it be project 2. We'll leave all this like that. We add the same file just to speed up the process and go next. Let it be the same transition memory, I don't mind. For an example, we go next. And this is where we select the prepare option. We go next and finish. 
Okay, done. Close. Now we have two projects created, and let's have a look at them. I go Studio and Projects. These are the two project folders. If I go to one, you will see the same similar uh, files that are familiar to you. I mean, not files, but, but folders, right? And if I go to Project 2, you can see that an extra folder was created called TM. This this the folder with a, another TM, which will save my translations. This means that besides this memory that I specified before, this one, right, that we created and which was empty, besides this um, memory, my translations will also be saved in this another project TM, which might be asked by my customer to be to be given to the customer. Well, this this is well. This is what I was going to show you. Since we are not dealing with this, I can easily delete my project here from this list. Just remove it, and I go to Documents, Projects, and I also delete my project too from here. This was just an example to you. Okay. So we have created a project. We have uh, a document ready for translation. And we can uh, we're ready to proceed with the translation. So I'll see I'll see you all I'll see you all in the next video.